Hogstock. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Hogstock. We have a jam-packed episode for you guys. There were name changes to the stadium. We're going to talk about a preseason game that didn't matter. We got roster cuts, trades, uh, and we got to do our season prediction. This is like probably should have been split up into two shows, but you know we're not going to do that because we're lazy. We're, we're we are lazy. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to have... talk about the weather in South Texas for a while first. No, we will not talk about the weather I, in South Texas. You will not Texas. tell me what to say. <laughs> I will talk about the weather, but I want to talk about the weather. I mean, you know, we could, but I don't. I I really don't want to because our our weather. Uh, I would love to follow up on my grandson's third birthday party we're having this weekend. Why don't you oh, tell yeah? us? Tell us, Dave. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm going, I'm going on a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up a little bit hurt that I'm not invited, to be honest. To, to Dave's grandson's yeah. birthday? Oh okay. wait, so I thought I, I mean, thought I'm the busy return. That day, but... I thought the return, the uh, RSVP with the. Uh, Picture of the middle finger was you. <laughs> I didn't receive an invitation because I apparently am not worthy. <laughs> Again, I'm busy. Whatever day it is, I'm busy that day, but I just want right. to be included. <laughs> he, it's nice to be thought of. That's the thing. Nobody ever thinks of me. I'll tell you what. I'll play this show in the background of, the, of my grandson's uh, birthday. Okay, so oh, that'll as at least much give profanity me... as possible from here on out, Steve. <laughs> It'll make me feel <laughs> slightly better, slightly included. <laughs> Uh, three. Uh, I remember three vaguely. It was not fun. I, I, that's, that was kind of when things went downhill for me. You so. remember the, your third birthday party? Not my third birthday, but I remember being three. Oh yeah. I remember being two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Let, let's, let's get into the meat of the show, guys. I hate it when this happens. We did a good show last week. I thought it was a great show. We put it out there. <laughs> And what happens like Five two hours after later. it goes up? <laughs> the team makes a major trade, Jahan Dotson to the Eagles. Uh, mm. They trade Dotson in a fifth for a third and two sevenths. Decent return, but you traded the guy who I think everyone still kind of assumed was the number two receiver. And it really felt a little bit out of the blue to a lot of us, didn't it? Yeah, um, I mean... <laughs> Kind of an odd trade, a little bit in a sense, and for what you said, which is he was the number, clearly the number two receiver, whether he deserved to be or not, out of basically a lack of someone else. Sure. You, you know, and, and there were times when all of us thought he, you know, exhibited a lot of talent, but the fact is he'd kind of underperformed in terms of first round, what you would hope to get out of a first round draft pick. Um, so, in that respect, I'm not surprised. The return definitely didn't surprise me, you know. It's not a ton, you know, but that's what you're going to get from a receiver like that. So uh, a bit odd, but they probably got what he's worth. That's That was my thought. Well, I know that I'm probably easily in this fan base and definitely on the show, the one of the biggest Dehan, John Dotson fans. I still think he has a place in the NFL, but the problem with John Dotson, uh, before the fact that we, we kind of had the idea on who, who, who Dan Quinn was referring to on – guys kind of not getting on into the program like they should. Mm -hmm. We have a, we kind of have an idea he was probably one of them. I don't know for sure, but I know when you have a drop percentage rate of 9.8%, yeah, you improve the year after that last year to 6%. When you follow up into this offseason where you're still having trouble uh, uh, you know, with ball control, especially Bob and two receptions are to be out in the it's, – it's just – he he had things going on. He had things that he had to had to iron out. He wasn't mm -hmm. ironing out. I think once he gets that in line, I think he's a really good number two, number three receiver for anybody's roster. Where he's at in Philly, he's in a perfect spot. He's like their number four receiving option up there. He has a chance to kind of flip the script a little bit, but he's he's got a lot to figure out. And I'll tell you what, after two years and he comes in this preseason looking the way he is. I, I even my confidence level on on him being that maybe not premier re, uh, receiver kind of waned a bit about him even being a premier number two guy. I'm mm -hmm. not even sure if he's even going to be that anymore. I hope I think I'm wrong on that. I hope I am, but we'll see. 
Um, well, yeah, first of all, since he's moving to Philly, he's going to have to learn to be a jerk, you know, because otherwise he's not going to get by in the city of Philadelphia. But but beyond that well, fact, he's, he's from that area. So, he's so from I think the area he went to Penn State. He's all good. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he's yeah, true. So he can be a jerk and he can he also knows how to run from predators, you know, because he's from Penn State. So, I mean, that's see? Good. I mean, he's good yeah. to go, man. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. I mean, the fact that they in all seriousness that they traded him to the Eagles inside the division says, says lot, everything yeah. you need to know about what Washington thinks about him. I mean, it definitely says something. Uh, I would have been curious to know if there were any other suitors outside the division and how much worse was that compensation at that point? Like I, I if it's, Hey, the Eagles are offering you what you got versus maybe you're getting a fifth from somebody in the AFC. Like I get it at that point. You, I mean, honestly, Dotson and a fifth for a third and two sevenths is not a lot. It's not, but you know, like if you really want to get rid of them, it's kind of like an extra large bag of Doritos. Yeah. Well, the third is something. It's not a but whole I, lot at the expense of a fifth. Yeah. So yeah. It's half of a third. Yeah. Yeah. It, look, I'm not thrilled with the return. I get it. They're trying to build I, this I think in their it's image, a, but a fair return for this player. Mm-hmm. I just I just think two things are in play here. One, I think they want to collect uh, assets later part of the draft that gives them maneuverability in the draft and move up, down, and all around or whatever. And two, I don't think they want to deal with any possibility of a fifth-year option for next year, having to decide over that, because they keep them with a fifth-year option. What's that? Uh, for pick 16, I think it's roughly around like 17, 18 yeah, million dollars, something like that. So, well, I mean, so you, well, you might as well get a return now why you can, why teams have interest, as opposed to after this year, it's more or less, well, we'll wait until he becomes a free agent. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe they looked at him and they said, you know what, this guy's going to make it. We're not going to resign him. It's yeah. just we're done. Let's just trade him, get rid of him. We can get something now, you know, while, you know, yeah. before he busts for another year. I mean, that might be the strategy. It makes sense. That's what you're saying. I mean, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, I think the bigger concern going forward is for the fan base, obviously, is going to be, well, then who is our number two? That's and a that was question. obviously the talk <laughs> of uh, the final preseason game, which didn't really matter. But uh, it was a good game uh, if, for those of you who actually paid it to, or wanted to watch and stayed up all the way through. I made it uh, through a good bit of it, but I got bored with it. Toward the end, even though well, the end became actually more exciting from a football standpoint, it it right. was more exciting in the end. Uh, Dave was nice enough to not wanted to go, so he gave me his tickets and uh, I went uh, in right. his stead. Um, stadium, by the way, your seats are nice. They they replaced your seats. They're, they're oh, really uh, cu- yes, they're new, they're all new cushions. So oh, they're cushion seats, huh? Oh wow, it, no, it's cushion. It's like foam, like a foam cushion thing. Hey, I'll but, take it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, in so the, that's... Dave's in the fancy seats, man. Well, they're not the pleather foam, Steve. That's the fancy seat. I, it, right. I mean, it could be like wooden bench seats, like yeah. old RFK was. Yeah, I was actually hoping they'd go to the messy, and they had a couple, couple sections over. Those yeah. seats are really nice. They yeah, gotta put nice. up more money for those. Yeah, um, but still. And yes, I, I, you know, I do have that RFK wood seat sitting right here. Oh, I was I, wondering I, what you ever did with it. It's it's in my office. I never put it on anything that makes it safe enough for me to use as my chair for the show, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be fun to do a show from that chair if I could find, like, stable braces for it. Um, so, But anyway, uh, the game itself, my only takeaway, because obviously it's all guys who've mo- – mostly guys who got cut. Man, am I gr- glad that Washington didn't take Drake May. He looked rough. Somebody said that in the, yeah. his quarterback preview. Yes. Yes, you did. Um, but I, I was shocked to see just how, like, he's playing third stringers and getting beaten up uh, by by Washington. Look, here's the thing about Drake May. And we've been over this. And we've got a lot to do. But right. Drake May has his moments. He sure. looks like he fell out of quarterback factory. He does have a big arm. He is so inconsistent yeah. that it really hurts He had hurts one him. very nice drive. Yeah, I know, because he's going to do that. He will look at times like that, mm-hmm. but a lot of other times he won't. And and I think the other thing is I think these NFL offenses or defenses, rather, are going to confuse him. 
Mm-hmm. So I, he's a guy who has the look more than he had the film. And people bought into him because he had the look. Uh, a little take. bit like maybe another uh, Carolina quarterback n- named Daniel Jones. Yeah, I didn't have Daniel Jones rated as high as the Giants took him. Yeah, and I'm I just think saying, the Giants have done everything right. they possibly could to make it work, and he has mm-hmm. gotten better. A better example would be Josh Allen. Sure. And no, Josh another, Allen was another guy who didn't have great film and great arm, right. and, and he still doesn't have a hyper-accurate arm, but he's made his gifts work, and the Bills have worked with him uh, you, you, you know, um, right. to help him get better. I just think there's a weird trend of uh, Carolina quarterbacks who everyone gets all excited for, and then they come and you see, oh, it's it's just not. Well, look, yeah. there's a reason why they're at Carolina. Yeah. It's because yeah. they weren't that highly rated by in, right. by those lofty standards coming out of high school. Right. right. It's a good academic school. That's well, a, yeah, yeah. I mean, but then they're playing <laughs> ACC talent. Right. You know, nine slough off games a year, and they'll get mm-hmm. beat down by like Big Ten school. Uh, I mean, it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they look good because they can put big stats up against inferior competition. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, so, even yeah, that was my I mean, only real takeaway. I don't know if you guys had any thoughts about the preseason final. Yeah, because I know even Jared Mayer, the coach on the Patriots, haven't even named their starting quarterback yet. So obviously, I mean, he hasn't exactly super wowed their their staff up there either. No. I think he, I mean, he's a guy realistically should be like Jordan Love sits for like two years. You know, take, I totally um, agree. Everything that's, that you said, yeah. That's what I said. Totally agree. Right. It, so. it, in terms of the preseason game, I who cares? It's yeah. over. We, we have the roster. I, I right. mean, I have no interest in going over stats or any of it. We've got too much to do. We do. I, I do have one question. Which one of you guys tweeted the whole black uniform suck thing? Because we got more. Uh, Raising was, my hand. I figured hands. it was Steve, but I thought I'd check. <laughs> that was my, I haven't tweeted in a long time, but that was right. my monthly tweet. Did it go? Did we get like well? 500 responses. To oh, that. did it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Probably some of them hated my thought. Some of them didn't. You know. Well, 500 people liked it. Most of the people who responded, which was probably like 50, that's more 50-50 split of you know yes and no. So I think I think it's safe to say most people hate the black uniforms. Because it took me a second. I was watching that game and took me a second to realize that was wait a minute. I'm I've, they've got the Steelers uniforms on here. Yep. Yeah, it took yeah, me a second to kind of click them. with me yep. that it was the Steelers uniforms. Well, you know? I know we all hate them. That's why I was like, I'm 90% sure this Steve, but it could be Dave. I, I know Dave's going to be tweeting from it. From <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, but I don't think we had to- asked you to tweet for that yeah. game. We had talked about it after that. So Plus, yeah, anytime and- somebody sends something really negative out, it's probably me. Just yeah. FYI. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, behind the curtain. If it's right. negative and snarky, it's probably me. <laughs> the the uh the one reason I wasn't tweeting, you, you really don't get good reception in that stadium still. It's a mess no. trying to like host anything. Good luck. Uh all right. By the way, that was the only time the team mm. will ever play in Commander's Field because the uh team has got a new name on the stadium. So I have Steve's mad he didn't get the whole thing because this is his favorite topic of the day. (laughs) Well, I will do it on IJB this weekend, but right, uh, all and I haven't read the deal or anything. I know it's Northwest Stadium, and that's all I know. I'll have eight year deal. I'll have I'll read it all before the weekend. But but I have been working on the season game previews this past week. Right, that's what's been keeping you busy. Yes. Yeah, and and so what I put in there was I couldn't write the c word because I'm not going to use that that word. So I put C words field, Ral John, mm-hmm. Maryland, and I'm up to week 13, I think now. So I'm going to have to go back and change all that to Northwest field, but that's, <laughs> that makes find me happy. Find, replace, find, replace. Yeah. That makes me happy. So yes. uh, I'm yeah. So Ralph North, John, Northwest John, federal credit union is the sponsor. I checked. There's like, it's a small credit union in Northwest DC and Bethesda and those areas. I was going to ask you about that. Cause there's no small bit of irony to bring in like a Northwest United States bank into DC, but it's a DC bank, huh? Yeah. I believe it is a DC okay. Northwest hmm. DC bank. Uh, some QAnon type claims it's a CIA front. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but even if it is, does it matter? Yeah, not really. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, conspiracy the part, theory segment. That's awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like it's a but it's a conspiracy without a point. It's like right, okay, right. and 
yeah. yeah. So <laughs> but the CIA controls all the banks, guys. Come on, we all know this. <laughs> Even if they do, it's just a football stadium name. Who cares what it right. is? Um, I just so, don't have yeah, to say it is very word funny field anymore. That it's called Northwest Stadium now, and it play they pl- don't even play Northwest DC. They play outside of Northeast DC in PG County. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, like Northeast I was hoping DC you were gonna Northwest Stadium. Yeah, I was hoping you were gonna tell me it's like based in like Seattle or somewhere. That that would be funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, Dave mentioned it. it's an eight year deal, but if the team moves they don't have to they don't retain their naming rights for the next stadium that's part of it which is not a shock you know that okay. i don't think anyone would agree to that um and somehow they're getting more money off of this one than the old fedex deal uh i think well, that, that i heard the deal was 30 years ago i remember yeah, yeah. the fedex was something around 7 million a year i don't remember exactly I think it was but this more than that but yeah this one's just a little bit more it is what they've been saying so most like, importantly seven, I won't... this is eight I'm not offended saying Northwest Field. That's no. the most important thing out of this. No, it's a it's a stupid name. Um, I, I think all people were talking. names are dumb. I got yeah, news I for you. People were thinking, all right, so what's our new nickname for it? I I got it for you, the Money Pit. That's pretty good. For Fed Field. Fed, Fed Field is a popular one. Union, since it's Federal Credit Union, Union Field. I kind of like the Money Pit. I think that's good. I like that. <laughs> Also, fun Tom Hanks movie. Yeah. Well, because the money pit, you know, <laughs> right. for for all those people who've been investing in season tickets all these years to watch nothing but garbage, right. and to get rained on by sewage and all the things that have it's happened. It's falling there, apart. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Money pit. Yeah, I like that. It, it came to me that. at like when I was showering the other morning. I was like, "Yay, that's a good idea." <laughs> all your best thoughts, people's best thoughts, send the captain in the shower. Yes, I, I I firmly believe that. All right, let's move on. Because, again, we got to keep a brisk pace today. Yes, we do. I'm out of breath as we speak. Yeah. Uh, the team made their ro- final ro- er, initial 53-man roster, as they'd like to say. It's not the final roster. Um, so cut down. Uh, I don't know. We didn't talk how we were going to do this. Do we just want to go position group? Here's who's in. Here's who's out. And... Let's do position group. Okay. So for the initial 53-man roster, at quarterback were, shockingly, Jaden Daniels made it as did Marcus Mariota and Jeff Driscoll. Uh, that means Sam Hartman and Trace McSorley were released. Hartman now on the practice squad. Uh, I, we haven't done our practice squad post, but I do believe I saw he made it. Yeah, he did. Um, I assume no real shocks to anybody here. No, that's uh, the way no. it should have been. Yeah, the only thing I was kind of wondering, the NFL did end up saying, uh, they took away the whole you could bring up a practice squad quarterback into a game in an emergency. Like, that was a rule that just changed well so wait, wait wait hold on i mean you can still elevate a practice squad player but the rule was that you could do have an unlimited number of elevations for a third for a practice squad quarterback that was the rule and they got rid of that so you right. can still take hartman and elevate him to the roster but there's a limit as to the number of times you can do that before you have to sign him to the roster That's right what it right 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 so it kind of forced them to keep three quarterbacks on the active roster i think at well, i point. mean probably smart it's yeah. cautious yeah. if nothing else yes also driscoll played well all right um yeah. and no surprise that's the way it should have been yeah yeah running backs again not really surprises top two are brian robinson and austin eckler jerry Mc, jeremy mcnichols getting that third spot over uh wiley chris rodriguez jr and austin jones that was a real competition you know i think we all kind of you, I know, Steve, you were a big Chris Rodriguez guy. Yeah, but he didn't play well in the preseason. He did not. No, Michael Wiley just... played well. Yeah, yeah. I kind of thought Wiley was going to be the one to get the third spot. Yeah. That's yeah and I was too. quietly an Austin Jones fan as like a dual threat guy, but not shocked necessarily that he didn't get there. Um, no, I mean, I don't think Robinson is any kind of great still, but he's going to be there. He's a second round draft pick. and Right. Uh, him and Eckler at least provide a capable one-two punch, I feel like. Um, all right, tight ends. This one surprised me. Zach Ertz, John Bates, Ben Sinat, and then our, our favorite guy, Colston Yankoff. Made you just want to say the name, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you didn't read my quick reaction, uh, if you can spot all the dirty jokes in, in my what I wrote. What was your reaction? All right, I, I wrote, this was a real shocker of the day. Yankoff being, beating out Cole Turner 
catching many with our pants down. I'm sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> see, I only see one dirty joke in there, but my mind doesn't work like Alex's. Dave, how many did you get? Come on, man. There's at least three in there. There are three in there. Good what job. Are the, okay, I got the the comp with our pants down one. Beating out. Co- oh, yeah. okay. And then uh, Shocker. I'm sorry. I guess I just lack the immaturity well, well, to. I think we might those. have to explain the Shocker to Steve after. I kind of don't the get the Shocker uh... one, to be honest, but okay. <laughs> Dave, don't play this for your three year old. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, I was going to say this is a three year old. All right. Uh, um, but look, I mean, Cole Turner, you know, victim of being drafted by Ron Rivera has never really done much. Right. Not surprised. Colson Yankoff is a guy that looked good during the preseason at he times. Did. Yeah, he yeah. really did. And more importantly, this new administration knows him, likes him. This shouldn't have surprised anybody. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they did try to trade Cole Turner at one point before cutting right. him, which I thought was interesting. Hey, and actually, um, the one thing I found out about Yankoff that was pretty interesting was uh, <laughs> a name. Sorry. But yeah. uh, is that he, he was actually a uh, high profile dual threat quarterback coming out of high school, going to college. So he has some quarterback experience. He, uh, he definitely he played wide receiver a little bit in college. Uh, he played that H-back role. And he mm-hmm. also, obviously, tight end right now. So he's kind of the almost like a multi-tool type of guy. Well, Yankov could possibly be the emergency quarterback if things completely go off the rails, uh, you know, yeah. for example. Sure, in, in, in like a mid-game thing, yeah. Yeah, everybody's right. hurt or whatever, yeah. I, I yeah. actually do wonder if he's kind of being brought in to play that fullback H-back role because he did play running back in college and he's mm-hmm. smaller. He's, he's 225. So like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in that kind of role. I, I mean, he's not going to get a lot of traditional tight end playing time on a roster with four no. active tight ends. So it's possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, of course, special teams play. I think it's more likely you're going to see him inactive every game. More likely. Probably. You're right. Um, all right, so receivers, uh, we have Terry McLaurin, Diami Brown, uh, Luke McCaffrey, Omadi Zacchaeus, uh, Jameson Crowder, Byron Pringle all made it. Now, we should mention that the team signed Noah Brown from the Texans, uh, who was, I guess, their third receiver. I, I don't really... So he, he... I've got Noah Brown here. I'm not going to, since we have a lot to do, <laughs> yeah. but... Suffice to say, he was drafted seventh round by Dallas 2017, spent right. five years in Dallas, back up, f- didn't play a ton for four of those years, and started 2022, mm-hmm. uh, and then signed with the Texans 2023, uh, played 10 games, started seven. Um, but, I mean, his stats are nothing special. Catch rate 59%, uh, you know, five touchdowns in his career. I right. mean, he's basically been a career backup who started one year. Yeah, and he, last Six two, year, he's 220 had, pounds, I think it is. Yeah, so he's another bigger guy, which they yeah. need more height. Um, and he's also, last two years, uh, just over 500 yards, 550 range. So, uh, you know, like, that's kind of what you need for a, a third down contri- or a third receiver contributor type. Uh, the, on the other especially hand, a team with no that, talent. There's a reason the Texans cut him. Sure, they also brought in Stephon Diggs. <laughs> true. Well, true, good point, true. Yeah. Well, well, the uh, Texans were trying to move uh, Menchie out there because they're so loaded over there. They have a lot of receivers out there, Nico Collins, mm-hmm. you know, Diggs and so forth, uh, Bell, I mean, or Dell rather. It's uh, it's definitely a stacked group they have out there, so he was, he was the odd man out on that. The problem mm-hmm. with Noah Brown, too, you have to be careful with is he he's been plagued with injury. He's missed a lot of time with injuries as well. And yep. you know, I mean, he's got a good catch radius. He's got the size. He does have some concentration drop issues. I read today from somewhere. I yep. mean, he will have that from time to time. You know, but overall, if he can stay healthy and being and coming out of the slot, I think he's a nice addition. I think it'd be okay. I mean, he's better than like Byron Pringle and so forth. The back end of that receiving core, so. I mean, I think well, they're I mean, definitely in that, a role for him, but how significant remains to be seen. I, to be honest, he's you mentioned Byron Pringle. I mean, he's one of the only guys in this group that has any real experience mm-hmm. actually Pringle? playing. No, yeah. no, no, no. I mean, Noah Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pringle has a little bit, but and James and, other than James Crowder, I guess I didn't mean to leave him out. But, but you know, Ol, you know, mm-hmm. Olmeade Zacchaeus, Byron Pringle. 
Luke McCaffrey's yeah. a rookie. Right. You know, at least Noah Brown's been around and has played. And, and yeah, he's produced more in his career than Diami. So. Yeah, by a lot. And so, I mean, it's a low bar, but... Right. Because it is true. Because it's not like Diami Brown has been any great shakes either. I mean, Washington is really lacking. This wide receiver group is not good. No. It's a weakness right. on, the, on the roster. Right now, it definitely is... Uh, one good guy, a rookie, a rookie who I think we have some hope for, and then a lot of nothing. Um, at this point, it's almost like and, they should have traded for Brandon Ayuk. I mean, look, I, I think that's a lot of money, but um, actually, yes. I just, I just didn't. I don't think they want to invest a first round pick that they wanted because they were not going to trade McLaurin. Right. And it was this, and you need that first round pick right now to get offensive line help. You have to be able to maneuver with that first round pick. Drop mm-hmm. back, get more assets, so you can try to get more swings at the offensive line group and stuff like that. They can't, they cannot move that first round pick at all. No, I mean there would have been no point to trade Terry McLaurin to get Brandon Ayuk. I mean, what's right. the point? Yeah, right. Well, a slightly one year younger guy. And yeah, you know, I mean the point was yeah. to get them together. You know, right, right. Uh, so the guys they cut: Devon Davis, uh, Martavis Bryant, Mitchell Tinsley, Marcus Rosemary Jackson. Bryson Tremaine and Kaz Allen. Kaz Allen, who the team brought did bring back also on the practice squad, and they're now full time calling him a running back. Just yeah, he's so good at times. I was rooting for Rosemary Jackson just to yeah. have the name on the roster. Well, he's yeah. now on the Eagles ta- uh, our practice squad now. I, I mean, Eagles I grabbed him. And um, some of the geniuses in our comment section, you know, were touting the signing of Martavis Bryant at the time of a couple weeks ago. Sure. Anybody with a brain would have seen that that was just like a flyer on a dude, and right. that was it. Yeah. You know, and he's gone. That should surprise no one except the morons who comment in our. Comments did did he get put brought on our practice squad? I didn't no. see. Did no, no, no. Just uh, Tinsley and uh, Bryson Tremaine. Okay. Are the only two receivers we brought back. Interesting. And like you say, Kaz Allen. The running yeah. back listing. Yeah. All right. So O line, we got Coleman, who, it, by the way, is healthy now and practicing. They're saying uh, Nick Allegretti, Tyler, Tyler Biadish, uh, Sam Cosme, Andrew Wiley, Cornelius Lucas, Trent Scott, Michael Dieter, and Chris Paul. Uh, they tried to trade away. Was it Braden Daniels? Who, who was it that they were trying? Uh, no, uh, Stromberg. no, Stromberg. Yeah. Yeah. Stromberg. They were trying to trade away Stromberg. Didn't do. Didn't get it. Any bites. Uh, Julian Good Jones uh, was released, and he's on the practice squad. Braden Daniels, uh, David Nawagianu, who we never, <laughs> but we never got his name right. That's fine. And didn't we uh, say Inwagugo? In Inwagugo Wugo? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. We won't ever have yeah. to say it again. Yes, Armani Taylor, Prelu, and then Cameron Tom, who I always thought was a typo. I thought it was Tom Cameron. No, I don't think so. It's he was only here now. for five minutes, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Yep. So, uh, still panicked about that old line group. Well, you personally. should be because it's yep. a weak O line. It is. It is. Oh, that, that's being nice. Yeah. I mean, so who's going to start left tackle? I'm, I'm guessing Pretty Coleman. Useless. How can they possibly do that, though? The man is not even, he didn't even play in preseason. Do they I have think a it better... has to be. I think there has to be Cornelius Lucas to start. Yeah, I do too. Year, I anyway. think it has to be Cornelius Lucas. I think ultimately comes Brandon Coleman, yes, but right now I think it almost has to be Lucas right now. They can't yeah, they can't throw Brandon Coleman to the Wolves like that with a rookie quarterback behind him and that'd be a disaster. I mean, you you have a fair point. So, uh, we'll see. I mean, uh I don't love the situation. Oh, you shouldn't. I, I mean, cuz yeah. basically you've got Sam Cosme is pretty decent. Yep. And you've got Tyler Biotish. Who's decent. Yeah, yeah, but beyond that, nope. I mean, it's a bunch of Gorick, basically. Yeah. And, Str- and Stromberg, I think they brought back on IR, didn't they? Didn't they bring him back and put him on IR? Uh, I think so. I think one yeah. of them, yeah. Or, or I think he, he was, I can't remember if he was put on IR or if he it was one I of those I will figure injury... all that out this yeah. weekend when I update the roster for the yeah. regular season. I haven't gone through any of that yet. Okay, so let me run through D line. Uh, we got John Allen, Deron Payne, Jazir Newton, uh, Phil Mathis, uh, Ridgeway. They just traded. I had him initially listed. I I didn't update my thing, but they just traded him. Cleland Farrell, Dorrance Armstrong, 
Javante Jean Baptiste and Jamin Davis is now listed as a D lineman on the official. Otherwise team known as we need to try to make something of a busted first round pick. Yes. Yes. yes there's that. Uh, the big surprise that they released KJ Henry. That surprise of all the moves they made, that one yeah. is the one that surprised me. Yeah, yes, I, I think agree. everybody was surprised with that. Also released Taylor Stallworth, F.A. Obada, uh, our our favorite Benning Potato, uh, <laughs> Nolan Pollard, Jalen Harris, Justin Hollins, and then Hagi Nabini Hagi Debussy. Nabusi, yeah. I don't think I think the N is silent. Dub Debussy, that makes I think sense. So. Debussy, yeah. Yeah, shocked they didn't keep KJ Henry. Yeah, uh, I really was. I what's and that? The Bengals, I mean, and the Bengals end up uh, picking uh, they pick them off of waivers. Mm-hmm. I see. I, I wonder if they tried to play a calculated game here and hope and thinking he would make it to their practice squad while they continue to reshape their roster sure. and hopefully may, maybe bring him back on after they're done whatever they plan to do. And I think it was a bad miscalculation. Well, I here's my conspiracy theory. I think that if Jamin Davis was not a first round pick, KJ Henry would be on the team. That's what I think. I think Jay, I felt they felt like they probably had to keep Davis another year because he because of his draft status, even though it was a prior mm-hmm. administration. Um, but if all things being equal, I think we all would probably rather have Henry in there. But uh, you yeah. know, he kind of lost out because of that. That's what I think. The the Ridgeway thing is obviously the other big story from this group, and trading him to New Orleans for basically a pick swap of a seventh for a sixth, uh, not a whole lot of return. Obviously, it's better than I guess That's just like a half back. a bag of yeah. used Doritos. But you know what, Steve, a half a bag of used Doritos is better than no Doritos. Yeah. You oh, I'm, yeah, unless I'm they're stale. Yeah. Unless they're stale. I, but you uh, can feed that to like the dog or something. I mean, it fit, it's something. Honestly, you open up a bag of Doritos, it's a little stale. Although I don't know if I'd want to <laughs> feed Doritos to a dog, so that's probably no, not a good. Don't do, don't analogy. do that. Especially not the spicy ones. Yeah, that's not a good analogy. Forget I said that. <laughs> if for the people listening at the third birthday party, don't don't do that. Right. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that to my dogs. <laughs> Dave, Dave, you can't serve Doritos. Just be safe. No, you're right. I mean, if you can, if they know they weren't going to cut him, they could trade yeah. him away for whatever. At least it's an asset they didn't have that they now do have. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Right. I think that's kind of their that was their thinking with all those trades they were trying to make. Yeah. All right. Linebackers: Wagner, Luvu, Dante Fowler Jr., uh, Malik Walker, and then Dominique, Dominique Hampton are the guys in. Uh, McGee is on IR, the fifth round pick. And they release Anthony Pittman and Chappelle Russell. Who was here for five minutes. Yeah. Um, I'd I, say this is one of the few groups, this and quarterbacks, or maybe the two groups that this coaching staff actually improved. Yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, Austin Eckler, we'll see. But, um, you know, they've got some pro. They didn't have a linebacker group basically last year. Now they've got two solid pros, Bobby Wagner and Frankie Louvu. I, and, and I would hold out some hope that Dante Fowler can actually play as well. Yeah. So they might have a decent linebacker group now. And, and let's be honest, uh, even though they're listing listing Davis as a defensive end, he's kind of a tweener where he'll be filling in in that group as well. Yeah, which, sure. Yeah. Uh, as much as I think everyone rags on him, he's not like a bottom five linebacker of the league. He's just not. He hasn't lived up to his billing. Like he's right. more than capable capable to be in that rotation. You just don't uh, want him. I mean, on some team, yeah, some higher quality teams, probably not. Maybe not. I mean, but I mean, I mean, I mean, how bad is it that a fifth round, right? Dominic Cantor Jeff in the fifth round, right? I believe so. Yeah. A fifth round rookie beat you out in the linebacker position, and you had to be laid as a defensive end. Wait, was Dominic Hampton a fifth round? Oh, pick I'm gonna too? look right now. I thought he was. That's what I mean. That McGee was a fifth round. He was, pick. No, he was fifth round pick. Yeah, because they because they had a couple fifth round picks. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So, they picked multiple yeah. linebackers in the fifth round. You're right. You got beat out by a fifth round rookie. Doesn't yes. say much. Technically, by two, one just got hurt. True. Yeah, that's true. true. That is true. <laughs> like I said, uh, if it was anybody, if Jamie Davis was anybody but a first round pick, he'd be gone. And yeah. KJ Henry still be here probably. Yep. yep. 
Uh, all right, safeties. We got Chin. We got Quan Martin. We got Jeremy Reeves. We got Percy Butler, Tyler Owens, and Derek Forrest. It, that's a solid group of safeties. I, well, I know... Dave was right. I, I mean, but why on earth? I still think it's stupid. Why are they keeping six safeties? You called it. You were right. I was wrong. But I think well, it's Well, I mean, I where, think— Where are these people going to play? Well, see, that's the thing, though. When you look at it, I mean, regardless of how good or bad you label Quan Martin— as a defensive back, a slot outside corner, however you want to label him, he is better than anyone they had on the back end of that cornerback room, period. And he it's played well much. as a at still, but he still was. So but he was but it, but it, obviously he played he played well as a free safety. But now you have the option of moving Quan Martin up in certain packages as a defensive back in the slot or whatever. And you mm-hmm. can slide either a Butler or Forrest as the free safety back there. And depending upon how well Tyler Owens grows, he could wind up being out of the free safety. So you have the flexibility to move around. Now, it doesn't. It also doesn't discount the fact that they might pick up another corner before the, before week one starts. I, I just, and you might see that change down to five safeties. We, we don't know that. I still just think it's silly. I mean, it, you know, flexibility, great. But, I mean... Six of these guys cannot play. There's going to be three of them inactive every week. I don't think I, so. I think I, I think I think you're going to see a lot of formations with three with three safeties we'll in every yeah. formation. Well, I mean, aren't the three it, safeties it, Jeremy Chin, Percy Butler, Derek Forrest? I mean, realistically, that's those are the safeties that are going to play, right? I, I think it depends on. I think it's going to be very package heavy. Um, like Dave is kind of saying, I think if they do three, you will see Quan Martin or Jeremy Chin chin come down into the slot and playing like dime or that slot uh corner roll more um depending on what they think they need you know chin is kind of like a bigger guy like he's a definite Mm -hmm. strong safety type uh whereas martin more just a defensive back right like he he's not you don't expect him to be a hard hitter um so i i think that it'll be role based very much so with those guys I do think uh, Butler and Forrest are kind of more, your more traditional play too deep safety type safeties. Yeah. So I think it's going to be role heavy. And I also think a lot of this has to do with the new special teams. Um, that's just my opinion is that you have all these uh, new kickoff rules and you don't want to use big fat, you know, linebackers or defensive ends in the kicking game anymore. So I think they want that's, more speed in the too. kickoff. Yeah. Well, so. I think Jeremy Reeves obviously is here for special teams. I think he is. Right. Percy Butler's also been always been a good special teams guy. But I think he's going to – I mean, he may play some, mm-hmm. I think. I think the players, if you ask me, Chin, Butler, Forrest. You know, you may get Quan Martin out there once in a while or whatever, but I think, to me, those are the, your safeties, and the rest of them are just extra. I think no, I think no, I think Quan Martin just starting free safety week one, and the only and the only time you'll see him coming down is when they, and and Dan Quinn is not shy away from a lot of package sets where he has three safeties on the field. He's done that yeah. in Atlanta. He's done that with uh, who is it uh Dion? It was a linebacker safety hybrid they had out there, Dion Jones, I think, or something like that. But I can't Dion I can't remember it in my head. Yeah, okay, there you go. That's even better. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I mean, he played that multiple role. He he he'd be back there. He would play some strong safety, but mostly he was up almost like what you call the nickel back now with still two safeties. But he mm-hmm. was a safety and a linebacker, you know, in a mold. He was never a corner, you know. Right. But he played those package sets. Dan he played Quinn Cobra shy away or Buffalo, that. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Right. Well, irrespective, so. you were right. I was wrong, but they should have followed my advice and kept four of them. So that's my conclusion. Um, I, I do think that there will be some move if they can get another good corner because yeah. this corner group needs help. It's Mike Sandersell, uh, Benjamin St. Juice, Manuel Forbes, then Michael Davis and Noah Igabuni. Yeah, and that kind of sucks, doesn't it? It does suck. Um, that's brutal. Do they yeah. have a legit starting outside corner in that group? Nope. No. Not, not really. Like not a number one. No. He, not even a number three. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, no. I mean, Michael Benjamin Davis St. might be a number two. Good. Davis, he could be a number two on a good day, but... I mean, Benjamin St. Juice didn't look good in the preseason. No. Manuel Forbes is lucky he's on the team. 
Right. Uh, you know, Mike Sanders still is not an outside corner because of his size. No. So no, you're kind of down to, can Michael Davis play? I mean, he had his moments, I'd say, you yeah. know, preseason a little bit. And no, I, Igno Benny, if that's his name. I mean, yeah. no. So, yeah, it's um, that's a rough group. I mean, yeah. it's gotten worse than it was last year somehow. And, and here's awesome. the thing. Uh, <clears throat> they released Nick Whiteside, A.J. Wood, Tariq Castro-Fields. Chigoe Newsom, uh, some guy named Kai Blue Kelly. I don't Kai even Blue remember Kelly him. Played a little bit last year. Did he? Yeah, I don't he remember. He had some him. playing time. Okay, and then James, like none of those guys are any better than the guys they kept. No, not really. No, this is a bad group, man. Um, oh, and uh, we didn't even mention it. They did uh, trade for a kicker, Cade York. Uh, and well, you hadn't gotten to that run. yet. I think. Hmm? You hadn't got to that group yet. That's true. But we're. I, I'm also realizing we need to. Well, why don't we rewind? Go okay in the special teams group. Okay, Trust fine. Wayne, Tyler <laughs> Ott and then Cade York, who they traded for from the Cleveland Browns for a bag of chips, is yep. the kicker. Yep, a seventh round pick for a kicker. Finally, after all that consternation, they finally got an actual NFL kicker in there, right. which they Hopefully. could have done in the beginning, which but they decided not to. Right. Hopefully. Thanks, Brandon McManus, for abusing a flight attendant. Right, dick. <laughs> <laughs> All Remember, right, got three year olds listening to this. Ah, uh, well, that's <laughs> true. Okay, uh, let let us let us talk about season predictions, guys, because we have twenty minutes, and I know how long it always takes us to do season predictions. Are you keeping track? Hold on, let me do a quick copy and pay. Or yeah, I'll do it that way. While Alex is doing that, I published mine already. Yep. Uh, on the on the site. Um, yesterday called Season Prediction 2024. So you want to see mine in detail, you can go there because I'm going to just repeat on here the show what I already predicted in writing. Right, right, right. So week one, let's just get it started. Uh, it is versus Tampa at Tampa. I should say not versus Tampa. It is versus um, Tampa. Hmm? It is versus Tampa. It is versus Tampa, but you know that how the vernacular tends to go. All right, Steve predicted... Uh well I'll let Steve tell his for me yeah. yeah yeah I think Tampa wins a close game here it, um Jane Daniels first game uh, that may work to his benefit a little bit if they don't really know him but Tampa Bay is too good a team uh, you know even considering their their past defense last year so I, but it's at home for them mm-hmm. I just think Tampa's gonna win a fairly good game Washington won't look bad but they're not gonna win yeah I got I got Tampa in this game Tampa's got good quick linebackers. They got a fantastic secondary. The defensive front, it's not as good as it was years back, but still still pretty strong. And our offensive line is going to make them look like as if they've been seasoned vets at playing at all pro level for years. Um, but the biggest worrisome here is that you got Godwin and and uh, Evans against that corner cornerback group that we have. You know, they had Rashad White as a dual threat running back out of the backfield. You know, now granted, now we have linebackers now that can actually kind of take care of these running backs on the most part. Uh, but you know, mobile quarterback, I just it's I don't even see it a close game. I see it a double digit loss. Oh, okay. Alex, uh, I I think it is going to be close um, because of the unpredictability that Steve mentioned. Uh, with you know, people don't know what Daniels is really going to do. They might have sure. some idea, but I think the team's done a good job kind of hiding a lot of their game plan uh, in these preseason games. Um, so I'm going to say it's a close loss, but uh, yeah, Tampa's going to win this one. So let's move on to number two. Uh, week two, Giants at Washington. Um, since Dave or, or Steve went first, Dave, why don't you give me your thoughts first? I think the Giants are just an utter mess. The only thing they have are two really big elite edge rushers, and which will cause havoc against their offensive line. But I think the uh, uh, Daniel's presence in the pocket, his mobility, can help uh, sh- shake a lot of that off. And you know, you have Eckler be able to dump the ball off, and your tight ends are going to have an Ertz and Ben Sinner will help neutralize a lot of that and everything. This game right here, I think. Uh, will be that game where we want kind of see uh, Daniels really open up and have a big game, and I can see us actually blowing this team out to Washington standards for this year. I yeah, can I see don't... a slight double-digit win, maybe like 
11, 12 point win? Uh, yeah, I mean, Washington isn't going to really blow anybody out. But, oh, no, I said to Washington State. Yeah, I know. I get it. I get what you but, mean. Yeah, I, they, look, the, we don't need to spend too much time on The Giants are a mess. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they may get it together at some point. But I don't see, especially coming into Washington, I don't think, I think Washington gets a fairly solid, I'll, I call it a solid victory, but we're kind of saying the same thing, Dave. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Washington does get this one pretty well, uh, or keep, get it, get a pretty easy win here. Um, if you saw that Giants offseason stuff uh, on Hard Knocks, that they're a train wreck waiting to happen. They really are. Uh, so I'm going to say Washington wins. Um, I will also say this, I I think this could also be the last time Washington faces, uh, Daniel Jones. That that's how bold I'm going to be about the Giants. That's not that bold. That's entirely possible. (laughs) (laughs) All right. uh, And just to piggyback off that, I I guess I'm going to say, I think they sweep the Giants this year. Thanks for blowing the prediction for the next game. Yeah. Well, I'm just yeah. saying. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you could have waited. Keep well, that's the thing, though. We want to we want to try to condense it down. I thought you so haven't condensed it down. It You've gone on and on about both games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Week three, Washington <laughs> at Cincinnati. Uh, I will go first this time. Okay. Uh, it's a Monday night game. We're just gonna lose, and and unless unless Joe Burrow gets hurt again, because Joe Burrow loves loves getting hurt, we're gonna lose. So yeah, I'm yeah, it's, loss. me too. A Monday night game against one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. There's no way Washington wins this loss. Big loss. The end. No, I agree. Absolutely. All right. Week four, uh, Washington at Arizona. Um, Steve, we're back to you first. Me. Okay. I think Washington loses this game. Um, if anybody knows Cliff Kingsbury, it's offense. It's going to be the Cardinals. Uh, you know, he was the head coach there. Um, you know, the, the, the Cardinals drafted Marvin Harrison. I believe in Marvin Harrison. Washington has a lousy, you know, corner group. We already talked about that. So, and I mean, Washington's traveling all the way to the West coast for this is the other thing. So I think this is a close game, hard fought game, but I think Arizona skips to the victory. I don't know. I, I don't think Arizona is going to have that much of a beat on Kingsbury as you think, because it's been a lot of turnover since then. I mean, he hasn't been there for what, three, four years now. You know, you have Gannon as a defensive coordinator. That I think uh, right now, I think Cardinals are kind of in a similar position as Washington going forward and rebuilding that roster, but just a year ahead. So I think it's going to be a good game down to the wire. I think Arizona does pull it out at the end, but I think it's going to be a very good game, actually, back and forth. I'm not an Arizona believer in, at all. Uh, I, I know they have some talent now, but I, I think Washington can handle them. I, I'm going to say this is a win. Okay. So right. uh, we are one quarter of the way through. Yay. Uh, week five, Cleveland comes to D.C. And David's your shot. Ooh, that defense. I don't care what quarterback they have playing for them in that one. It's probably going to be Deshaun Watson. Uh, Nick Chubb will be out, so they'll have Ford, who is a very good running back. Good receiving core led by Amari Cooper. Uh, I think this defense really kind of contains Daniels pretty well. But they got the speed and the rush, the corners, everything. I think this is a, 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 a double-digit loss right here. Yeah, me, this is a pretty big loss here. Uh, Deshaun Watson is a moral reprobate, but, you know, he's still a good quarterback. And, like, that yeah. that that pass defense, like you said, big hurdle. I didn't even realize Nick Chubb was going to be out. But even irrespective of that, um, this is a big loss. Yeah. Yeah, I, as much as I'd like, love to see us beat Deshaun Watson like a drum, yeah, uh, I just can't picture it. So I'm gonna go with you guys. It's Cle- it's Cleveland, uh, in uh, easily a double digit win. Um, all right, I guess it's me now. Washington at Baltimore, week six. <laughs> oh, sorry. This is a tough one, guys. No, no it Baltimore's isn't. gonna win. Yeah, um, Baltimore's you know a contender for this. Yeah, this is a bl- this yeah. is a blowout loss. Yeah. Well, the one caveat that I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, are you bold, that bold, Dave? <laughs> no. All right, do we just want to move on to week seven yeah, there? It's a loss. Oh, yeah. It's a loss. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, week seven, Carolina comes to Washington. Finally, finally, a game where they might have a shot. Steve, what do you think is going to happen? 
I well, you know, I'm not a believer in Bryce Young. I never was a believer in Bryce Young. He hasn't been good now. So um, Carolina is a total mess. Another team like Giants level or worse, and they didn't really get you know they didn't really they 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 lost their number one draft pick in a stupid trade you know so right. I think this is I think Washington wins pretty big in this case. Oh uh, yeah, they had nothing defensively. Offensively, they got some pieces and. I mean, but all in all, I think Washington all over this team. I think this is another real big game for uh, Jaden Daniels. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, this is probably going to be their easiest win of the season. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think we're all in agreement again. Carolina is going to – wait, Steve, did you predict Carolina? No, I said Washington in a big win. Oh, Okay. All right, so we all agree Washington is going to Dave win. and I have been in a complete sync here. You were off of us with one game, Alex, but you've yeah, more yeah. or less followed along too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, look, I think we all kind of have a similar viewpoint on the team this year. Yeah. Um, all right, week eight, Chicago comes to Washington. The battle of the first and second round rookie quarterbacks, hopefully, um, if no one gets hurt. Uh, I guess it's – is it me or who is it? You go for I think it might be you. Okay, I'll just go. Uh, I think, I think that uh, Chicago beats us. I think we have a better quarterback in the end, but that team is more well built right now. They have better receivers. I think their defense is more well put together. So I think that Chicago actually wins this one. Um, I actually, oh. no, go I ahead, Dave. Think, I I actually think this is going to be a pretty fun game to watch. I think both quarterbacks are going to do pretty well. The only difference is I think Chicago's defense is just going to be that much better than ours. I think they have the uh, edge up front, especially the front seven. Uh, I think Chicago pulls this one out late in the game, but I think it's a really good game right down to the wire. Um, I predicted – I went against type and predicted Washington wins a nail better. I do not – first of all, Alex, I do not think Jaden Daniels is a better quarterback than Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams may take more time to develop in the NFL, but he's a better quarterback. Sorry to tell everybody. Um, that's what I think. And, and I think Montez Sweat, this will be revenge game. Montez Sweat talked about how much he was hurt by Washington getting rid of him, remember? Yeah, and, yeah. We and saw so that that's something to this watch. Week, yeah. But I just think that Daniels will want to play well at home against Caleb Williams. And so I'm going to, again, go against my negative nature and say Washington ekes out a nail biter at, because it's at home and because Daniels will be focused at home to do well against Caleb Williams in particular. All right, Dave, what what did you were a win here? No, I was a loss against Chicago. All right, loss. All right. Okay, week nine, Washington at New York Giants. Dave, I, why don't you go first this time? I already gave it to you. Yeah, he yeah, did. He we did. win. We sweep the Giants this year. All right. My pick is no, but we're, Washington's not sweeping anybody this year. So at Washington's lost to the Giants in weeks they haven't, years they shouldn't, and yeah, but all the Giants that. are a bad team, man. Yeah, everything but Washington, about them. Washington isn't that good a team <laughs> either. So I mean, they're not gonna, they can't, they're not gonna sweep the Giants. That means they automatically have to lose this game. It's in New York. They're losing. All right. All right. Um. So I'm gonna say it's a win. I. I th- like I said earlier, I think that the Giants will probably be making a quarterback change midseason at this point. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that would bode well for Washington to get a, a, a sweep of the Giants. I would just like to is... point out that Washington has only swept the Giants once since 2011. So they do. Or alternatively, there's a reason it's, why it history, doesn't happen. History has a reason. Yeah, yeah, but you're talking about history on the old regime. It's a new regime. There's been multiple regimes, <laughs> okay? It's not just one regime. Well, I think he means yeah. overarching regime. Regime. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, week 11, Washington at Philly on a Thursday you night. Pittsburgh? You oh, wait. I, did I? I skipped Pittsburgh. You're Pittsburgh, right. Pittsburgh, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, week, we're at week 10. Sorry. Pittsburgh at Washington. Who wants to go first? I'll go first this time. Um, I think Pittsburgh wins a nail biter, so Washington loses. Yes, it's in Washington. No, I'm not really a believer in Russell Wilson necessarily at this stage of his career. But it, like Pittsburgh just has a knack for being a solid. Even Pittsburgh's off years are yeah. pretty good years by you know, normal standards. And so Pittsburgh tends to find ways to win where teams like Washington tend to not do. So 
Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm going to revert back to my more negative stance that I typically have. Even though it's kind of a down year for Pittsburgh, I think they figure out how to win this game. Well, I think right now you're, you're facing Pittsburgh defense with one of the top 10 units in, in this uh, NFL led by TJ Watt. Uh, and uh, you're going to have uh, a quarterback situation I'm not real impressed with, but it's their running attack because their running game. You know, Tomlin is going to just control the clock, ground and pound, and he's going to beat you up with his defense. I think I, I think it's going to be a decent game, and I think Pittsburgh still pulls out the end. Um, I'm going to go against the grain with you guys. I I think that that there's some volatility with that move to get Russell Wilson that will eke some you know rear its ugly head at some point in this this year. I, I, That's possible. Yeah. I mean, I look, the, the guy's been a problem in the last two locker rooms he's been in. Uh, I don't think that changes even with a good head coach like Mike Tomlin trying to help steer things. Russell um, Wilson is a guy who needs a specific offense. He and is. Denver didn't figure it out. We'll see if Pittsburgh does. He, I mean, that's true, too. But I'm talking more just personality. He he seems to be rubbing a lot of his teammates <laughs> wrong He's a way. bit of, yeah, he's got a kind of strange mannerism. Yeah. Yeah, so I think Washington actually wins this. I think Pittsburgh is on the verge of a true rebuild. Uh, I think they've been holding off as long as they can, though. All right, now we go to week 11. Uh, at Philly, Thursday night. Um, <laughs> I'll go first. It's just, it's a loss. Uh, Philly's, you know, we're, we're not, we still suck on nighttime games. It's Dave Philly, is literally night. laughing. I'm not. I'm probably not going to go to work on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, this game is no. This is. Oh, it's going to be a train wreck. Yeah. It oh, will. Yeah. Absolutely. Washington on Thursday night against a Super Bowl contender in the division. This is not going to go well. No. 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 Uh. All right. Week twelve, Dallas at Washington. Dave, you get to go first now. You know. Uh, Dallas, I think, is definitely taking a step back this year in many aspects of that team. Uh, and I don't think uh, Dallas is going to pull a sweep this year, and they always find a way of being tough in one of these games. And I think after a loss to Pitts, or, or, um, to Philadelphia, being on a Thursday night, having that extra time to prepare for Dallas, I think this is the game that they get Dallas in, and they pull out a squeaker down at the end of the game. And I think this game, they wind up winning. Okay. Uh, um, I wish I had your confidence because I, I, I don't see it. Um, I think uh, maybe in a year or two, Washington can really contend with Philly and Dallas, but I don't think it's this year, so I'm going to say it's a loss. Well, it's a, that's the thing. Washington always finds a way, typically, to split with Dallas almost every year. Well, no, they it's don't, crazy. actually. They don't always split every year, statistically. They don't. Some years they have. In um, most recent years they have, though, haven't they? I'll pu I had it. Uh, I'll pull it up in just a second. But I, I, I think Dallas wins. I do think it's there's a qu open question about how good Dallas is going to be. You know, they've lost some stuff. There's been some controversy. Um, but all the same, this is Dallas, and I, I, I can't. I, I just think Dallas is a better team. They have a history of winning. You know, they beat, they've, you know, Washington has one of the worst records. One of their worst records against any team is against Dallas overall in their in franchise history. And so I just, I just think Dallas is going to win this game. And if you want to know, okay, here we go. So Washington lost both last, uh, let's see, they both lost both last season. They split in 2022, um, lost both in 2021. Won both in 2020, then lost three in a row, won one, then lost four in a row. So that takes us back to 2016. That's kind of kind of all over the place, really. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Um. So let's move on to Titans at Washington. Uh, and I'm gonna say Titans are a mess. Uh, I think this is uh, one of the teams Washington should be able to handle easily if they're if they're building anything. So I'm going to say win. Okay. Dave? No, I, I think uh, Tennessee, they're, they're, on a, they're, they're, they're definitely on a downwards uh, end right now because 
They got a lot of pieces missing on that team, especially along the offensive line. They don't have a great deal of weapons on on offense outside their receiving core. I'm not a Levi fan or a Levis, whatever, fan for their quarterback. So I think this is a win. So I'd like to read. I was kind of proud of what I wrote about this game. So I'd like to just read it word for word. Adam, I come. You aren't going to convince me that Will Levis doesn't suck until I actually watch him not suck for a significant period of time. Because Levis has sucked, currently sucks, and will likely continue to suck, Washington will overperform here despite both defensive, ten, def- defensive deficiencies and some talent tendencies receiving group. Remember, Will Levis sucks. <laughs> so that was my that was my write up for this game. I, so, I think it's a I, I don't get your point. Like I don't is there yeah, I, is that an allegory for something? No, it's not. Yeah. Will Levis sucks. Okay. <laughs> I mean, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I, it's just, I was being a bit vague, so I thought I'd make some effort. Right. Okay. Vague. That's what that that yeah. would be. All right. Let, let's uh, move on to the final fourth quarter of the season, the final couple weeks. Uh, Washington at New Orleans. Right, before uh, we, you get to that, though, just ever so everybody knows, the bye week is week 14. Yes. Yes. Sorry. I, that's, that's a good point. Week 15. Washington at New Orleans. Uh, I believe this is when I'm going to be heading on my uh, big trip for vacation. So, uh, but that's besides the point. Uh, I will be missing a couple games. <laughs> um, so you don't care about the Hogs side, apparently. Well, I, I care about going and seeing Hobbiton more. So that yeah. hurts. Now we know where we stand. Look, <laughs> this is a game. This is a game that I was weirdly upbeat about and i can't really put a finger on it every year there's a game that washington wins that they kind of shouldn't seems like at least Mm -hmm. a lot of years there is and i just have a weird i have no basis for it whatsoever i just have a weird sense that washington may win this game for reasons that are known only to no one including me so i predict washington wins this game but i don't really have a reason for it i could see this a typical track game for the saints yeah. I think they look past them as they geared towards a playoff run because I am not 100 percent sure. But like most other teams, they're probably getting ready for their back their their final three, two, two, three games a season against the against divisional opponents. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, Washington takes advantage of that and gets their last win of the season right there. A better way to say what I said right yeah. there. I endorse yeah. So you think this is their last win of the season, Dave? Wow. Yes. He's giving away the farm here once again. Yeah, a little so bit. Um, all right. I, you know, in case uh, I lose power or something here, and <laughs> I'm going, you know? You guys know now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I New Orleans a hard team to kind of figure out. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the Derek Carr thing has not worked out for him, but Spencer Rattler's looking good. Uh, I think they'll make a change at quarterback by this point, and he could. Spencer Rattler looks good in the same way that like Taylor Heineke looks good. Sure, sure. He's not going to be a superstar, but no. I think he's he'll. I think it, if they make that change, he'll bring some life to that team for a little bit. So I, I think this might be a loss in the end. Okay. All right. Uh, we're on to week sixteen, and I was wrong. I, I had the dates wrong. This is when I'll be gone. Week sixteen. Uh, oh, okay. So well, how convenient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I again. Well, I have a 15-hour flight. Nothing's gonna be about that. Um, 15. Where are you going? Can you? You're willing to say on I'm the I'm going air? to uh, New Zealand. Oh, that's I, right. You told us. That. I told you yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got like a two-week trip to you know the New land, Zealand's not nice the land place. down under. No, New Zealand's. I've been there. It's a nice place. But continue. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Washington at Philly. Uh, I, I'll miss it, but I'm gonna say it's just a loss. It, this is a blowout yeah. loss. Yeah. Yeah. This is the end, really the season winding down quickly for Washington at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's over. Philly needs a win. It's in Philadelphia. This is a blowout. Right. Yep. Right. Uh, Dave, do we even need your opinion? He <laughs> said really. he said he agrees. <laughs> I know. That's why I was I was I was saying. Um all right. Week seventeen, Atlanta at Washington. Uh so Kirk Cousins maybe comes back. We don't know. Um, you know, it, it'll be week 17. Who knows if he'll be playing? Oh, he will be. Uh, you know, yeah, he'll I be. Think, he'll be playing. He'll be playing. Yeah, I I think that I think this offense is going to be humming at this point of the year, especially around with John Robinson. 
you know, you know, the defense was solid last year. They mm-hmm. improved it a bit this year. I mean, there's there's uh, there's nothing that this def- our defense is going to do to really stop much of what they have offensively with with Bajan Robinson, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and so forth. It's I just think I'm, I I I mean I don't, I don't think it'll be a blowout, but I think uh, Washington will take it down into the fourth quarter. But I think Atlanta just has a little too much for them, and they pull away at the end of the fourth. I agree with all of that, but this is another game in which I just I can't see Washington really wanting to lose a game in which features both Kirk Cousins and Taylor Heineke on the same team. Oh no, I, he was traded to the Chargers. Oh, was he really? Today. Oh, I didn't. Yes, oh, today, today he was. Oh, I today didn't. He was. I wrote this a couple days ago. Dude, that sucks for him, man. Like he went there just to be around his family. Yep. Well, you know, you know, life's hard in a big city. You're still oh, making, know. you know, it's you really know. hard making millions of dollars. To yeah, I know it's, it's rough. Um, this is a uh, they Washington should lose this game, but it's in Washington. This is another game. I think that like they'll play well when they don't have to, and uh, you know, I think that'll be this game. So I think they squeak out a victory here. So I predict win. Uh, I like how you're thinking, Steve. I just can't buy into it. I, I think that is a team that they're building to try and make a quick run at the Super Bowl, um, a la what the Chargers did a few years ago. Or not Chargers, uh, Rams. Um, and I, I just think this is a loss. Um, all right, last last game, Week 18, Washington at Dallas. Uh... I'm gonna I'm gonna say wild card. Washington wins this one. I, I don't have a reason <laughs> Are you for it. Yeah, Dal- okay. Dallas will be in the playoffs and resting their starters. Actually, no, I, they won't. Dallas Dallas would be would be out of the division by this point, and right now they're going to be playing to get at least a first round home game in the playoffs, and they're not going to let that slip by. They're going to play their starters in this game, and I think they definitely smack around a pretty much dead Washington team at this point. Yeah, I, I think this is an epic blowout. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. You you, you all can be wrong in 18 weeks. Yeah, see, but Alex is, I've done this a long time with Alex. And Alex <laughs> I can't, I can't like, let us get swept by the Cowboys. I yes. know, he's always, he's always wrong but about it, but he cannot <laughs> mentally get to predicting the Cowboys' victory. Yes. Well, I did earlier, but I can't predict, that I can't pain allow you, a sweep. Oh, that pain you. <laughs> Yeah. Can't do it. Won't do it. Don't care if I'm wrong. <laughs> All right. So that does it. Uh, I am quickly tabulating the stores. Boop, beep, boop, boop, bop. Mine uh, Steve, we, Steve, we already know what yours is because you yeah. wrote it in the column. It's uh, six, and 11. six and 11. Yeah. Dave, I believe you're at the same number. Yes. And, six and 11. Uh, I have a whopping one more win. I have seven, seven wins. Bunch so, of positive views here. Yeah, Damn. yeah, optimism. We're gonna get a lot realistic. of unsubscribes here after this yeah. show. <laughs> you got listen, people don't pay. We have never been fanboys with this. We have never done that. We've always told you exactly what we think. Right. We've been wrong. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah. Of course, we've been wrong. But um, you know, we started this as we were fans. But I think one of the things that we pride ourselves in this show is we will tell you the truth whether you want to hear it or not. Right. And that's just how we feel. Uh, um. You know, a lot of you fanboys out there, you know, every year, oh, this is a 10 win year. It never is. Right. The roster is not good enough to have a good team. Yeah. Simple now, the that. one the one thing I will add, though, in all my losses, I have even the ones that are the double digit losses. I think this year will be different in our losses than past years. I think Jaden Daniels is going to keep a lot of these games, maybe not necessarily close as in winnable. But they're going to keep it to where it's like, man, he could be that one dynamic throw, that one dynamic run that gets back into this game, mm-hmm. and he comes close to doing that, or he does do that, and you start seeing progression in Daniels throughout the year. And I think the excitement at the end of the year, even though with a bad record, I think the excitement is going to be now let's build off of this because we have something right here. That's and how much what? faith I have in James. Yeah, I Daniels. don't disagree. I mean, and and he's going to be a good quarterback, I think. Yeah. Um. And, and they can build off of it. I think all that's fair. And 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 look, six wins. If everybody recalls, is an improvement over last right. year. To, yeah. it, Shockingly people do, enough, people forget how hard it is and how rare it is that teams improve 
when they change administrations like this by more than yeah. two or three wins. There's just way too many Absolutely. offensive line deficiencies yeah, there's in a, the there's secondary, a the wide receiver group. There's a lot of deficiencies. Yeah, yeah. And I think and we're plus, all... And plus, at a six-win season, you're talking about a top five to ten pick. And for, for the needs that you have, I mean, be able to move back to the mid-round and pick up early day two picks or so, 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 so forth to address more of that offensive line. I mean, Grant, everyone's going to want that big elite corner that you're probably going to have available right there, but I want that offensive line ready to roll. I yeah. mean, at, at that spot, though, you might be talking about a franchise left tackle, too. I, I'm not oh, really yeah, a fan of— Oh, yeah, if one's available, of, absolutely, yeah. I'm no, not really a I fan agree. of trading down in round one, typically, but, I mean, your point is valid in that, you know, they can get they talent the somewhere. Yeah, they have options. Right. Yeah. But, no, I, yeah, I you're think, right, Alex. You're right, Alex. If they have an elite left tackle there, I'm you actually, definitely jump over them, yeah. I, I'm rooting for them to draft an interior defensive lineman. That's that's what I think they need. Yeah, that's that's always been their biggest you muted hole. muted your seat, Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, did I mute myself? Or <laughs> no, I think I pulled my headphones. <laughs> oh, you pulled your headphones out. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right. That's a good cue for us to end the show then. Uh, if, if we're, yeah. we're accidentally it's, muting our. It's live our... radio, people. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, guys. We will talk to you all next week as we get ready for game previews. Exciting. All right. See you then.